Boston has always been a hub of education. Boston Latin School and Harvard College were both founded within the first 10 years of the city's existence. While access to both schools was limited to the sons of the wealthy, it was considered necessary for all children, boys and girls, to have a basic education. By the early 19th century, there were more options for people lower on the social scale, but the finances of a child's parents determined the kind and quality of education they received. This can clearly be seen in the lives of two girls who grew up in Boston in the early decades of the 19th century. Harriet Hunt was born on November 9, 1805. Her father, Joab Hunt, was a ship joiner and navigator. According to the autobiography Harriet wrote later in her life, her parents spent a lot of time reading and debating together. Harriet's family had been in Boston for generations, and she grew up in the North End, a neighborhood full of people at all different points on the social scale. While Harriet had learned the multiplication table at home with her parents, she was five years old when she started going out to school. The first school she attended was run by Mrs. Carter on Friend Street. This was too far from home for the young Harriet to walk in the winter, so she also attended a school run by two sisters, Hannah and Elizabeth Brown. Both these schools were private. With Mrs. Carter and the Brown sisters, Harriet studied spelling, history, French, arithmetic, and English grammar. In addition, Mrs. Carter's school was attached to her husband's dancing school, so Harriet learned how to dance. It seems to have been taught for the physical benefits it provided, rather than as a useful skill in attracting a husband. Harriet's mother made sure to save the bills sent home by her daughter's teachers so that as an adult, Harriet would appreciate the investment her parents had made in her education. Fanny Appleton was born on October 6, 1817. Her father, Nathan Appleton, was a mill owner, industrialist, and congressman. Fanny grew up on the southern slope of Boston's Beacon Hill, still a wealthy neighborhood today. When she was 10 years old, she attended Elizabeth Peabody School in Franklin Place. Elizabeth Peabody was a pioneering educator, activist, and transcendentalist who later in life founded the first English-speaking kindergarten in the United States. At Elizabeth Peabody School, Fanny studied Greek, Latin, French, mathematics, history, geography, reading, composition, and spelling, as well as dancing, music, and art. Like Mrs. Hunt, the Appletons saved letters sent home by their daughter's teacher, but instead of saving the bills, the Appletons preserved Fanny's report card. Elizabeth Peabody's comments give a clear picture of what Fanny was like as a student. According to Elizabeth, Fanny's chief difficulty is that she learns her lessons with so much facility that they do not do the service of disciplining her mind or of occupying her mind, thus leaving her mind to the invasion of every evil. Apparently, Fanny was a somewhat lazy student, especially when it came to subjects such as arithmetic that didn't interest her as much as the others. Even though Harriet was 12 years older than Fanny, and at a much lower socioeconomic class, there are some similarities between the educations the two girls received. Both attended small, local schools taught by women. Because the schools were small, both girls were given a lot of close personal attention by their respective teachers. Both studied French, history, and dancing in addition to reading, writing, and arithmetic. At the same time, there are also some differences. Harriet changed schools in the winter to avoid a longer walk, while a 10-year-old Fanny wrote her older brother Tom that I have to walk in the cold a great way to get to school. The assumption here is that for Harriet's parents, the goal was simply to get their daughter educated. It didn't really matter who was doing that teaching while Fanny's parents wanted her to study specifically with Elizabeth Peabody. 
Harriet's education had a greater focus on practical skills, such as gardening and sewing buttonholes, while Fanny, who was the daughter of an extremely wealthy man, learned Greek, Latin, music, and drawing. Harriet Hunt's autobiography describes the north end of her childhood in the 18-teens as this close-knit, very uh, supportive community. She does not quote any evaluations that her teachers sent home, but that may have been because the teachers came to her home themselves. They would stop by to have tea with her mother. They were part of the fabric of Harriet's daily life. There was really no separation between school and home for Harriet. Whereas for Fanny, there was a very clear distinction uh, symbolized by that long walk from uh, Beacon Street to Franklin Place. What happened to these two girls? How did their childhood educations affect the rest of their lives? Harriet Hunt started a school of her own, and then she went on to become a doctor and an advocate for women's rights. Fanny married Henry Longfellow in 1843. In addition to being his wife and mother to their five children, Fanny was an intellectual support and an inspiration to her husband. Fanny was educated by a radical, groundbreaking woman and went on to live a fairly conventional life. Harriet, on the other hand, was educated by fairly conventional women and went on to live a radical, groundbreaking life. The type or quality of the education that you receive matters far less than what you actually do with it.